Administrator for the Office of Children's Affairs. I've brought a, free, a few of my friends uh, from OCA with me this evening, uh, both Kat Jarvis and Rhett Gutierrez. Um, if you both would like to introduce yourselves really quickly. Kat, how about you? Hi, everyone. I'm Kat Jarvis. I'm the Deputy Director of the Office of Children's Affairs, and I oversee operations for our agency. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have throughout the process, but know that Tara is uh, absolutely the expert in this process, so she'll be leading us through um, and answering any questions that you all have. I will say, please, uh, even if we have time for a Q&A at the end, put any questions you have in the chat so that we can download that at the end of the evening and post that in BitNet with our responses. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rhett Gutierrez. I'm the policy director with OCA. Um, I help facilitate the group that will be making the funding decisions um, for this RFP um, through the Denver Children's Cabinet. Otherwise, I support a lot of the policy and legislative work that our office does. But super excited to get this money out the door and um, we'll look forward to working with y'all. Excellent. Thank you both so much. Do we have anyone else from OCA on? I don't believe so. I believe it's uh, just the three musketeers this evening. Um, what we would ask for each of you to do is to drop your name, your email, and your organization name in the chat. Uh, we love to keep record of everyone that's here. And again, please please, please, please be sure to drop your questions in the chat as well. Um, and we can get started. All right, friends, can you all see the PowerPoint? Thumbs up? Okay, good enough. Again, thank you uh, this evening. We are here to share information about the 2024 Bronco Youth Program request for proposals. I will, uh, I'll start with sharing the background for these funds. Uh, these funds came to OCA as a result of the sale of the Denver Broncos. Uh, and so we were uh, given the opportunity to put these dollars out into community the Bolin Trust did set these aside specifically for youth programming in Denver. So uh, we give them a, a shout out uh, for that this evening. All right, so we are here to sh meet and greet with the Office of Children's Affairs, share proposal requirements and expectations, share contracting process details, and share some supports that are available uh, through the Denver After School Alliance. Uh, again, here are some contacts for the Office of Children's Affairs that are directly related to procurement uh, and contracting. We have um, our fearless leader, Kat, uh, myself here, and then Dominic Diaz is part of the uh, operations team as well. Since you all will be receiving a copy of this, um, these are for your information and for your use, should you have any questions. Quickly, uh, the Office of Children's Affairs, or OCA as we're also known, sometimes known as OCA, depending upon who you're talking to. We support Denver agencies, the community, and its service providers in ensuring all children and youth have their basic needs met, are ready for kindergarten, and have the opportunity to succeed academically and professionally. We currently fund partners who provide access to nutritional foods, high quality child care and out of school time, early learning and literacy services, youth transportation, youth violence prevention and mentorship, youth mental health, maternal child health services, child care support, cultural experiences, and pathways to post-secondary education and careers. 
we recognize that not all youth uh, will, that, that post-secondary education may not be their only path to success or their future. And so we do focus on careers, career exploration as well. For this, for this RFP, uh, the delivery four-year package will be electronic via BidNet. Here are the BidNet registration instructions. Uh, so you'll be able to click on that link. It is also listed in the RFP. And so we'll, we'll cover a little bit about that. Uh, for any of, of the friends that have joined us today that have used BidNet, this may be a refresher. Uh, for those of our partners that are new to uh, BidNet, this is just a quick introduction into registering your organization um, on BidNet.com. On the first page, you will click on vendor registration. It will take you to a page with package options uh, to purchase. Uh, for the purposes of this RFP, you will, you're welcome to choose the $0 option. It will get you what you need. After choosing the $0 package option here, click on add state. And for Colorado, we are uh, Colorado and Wyoming. That is the correct option uh, when you click on that. All right, and then you'll click save and continue here. Once you get to the next page, the default automatically toggles on for you to purchase this really great package that they have listed here. Again, for the purposes of this RFP, you do not need to have that package unless you absolutely would like to. You are welcome to. However, you can toggle this off and it'll return to the $0 package and you can continue to proceed uh, with your registration from there. All right. Here's where the fun stuff is, right? There are $1.2 million available for this request. Uh, the minimum contract amount that will be awarded through this RFP is $25,000. We uh, are not accepting any proposals that are less than $25,000. The maximum contract amount, there is no ceiling. You may request uh, any amount above $25,000, uh, there is no ceiling. All of this funding is local. There is no federal funding in this RFP at all. Our award requirements are that there can only be one request per organization. Programs must take place in the city and county of Denver and are intended to support in-person programs in Denver's Child Well-Being Index Opportunity Neighborhoods, which we will discuss later. And these programs should be delivered at no or extremely low cost to families. Organizations are required to be listed in the DAA Connect Partner Directory and in the city's youth program locator. We do offer trainings for DAA Connect. Uh, those dates are uh, tomorrow. <laughs> uh, at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. And then again on Thursday, September 7th at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. For those partners who have taken these trainings or who have been awarded and have been in the directory uh, historically in the past this year, um, these trainings are not mandatory. And so you do not have to re-attend uh, these trainings um, if you would not, if you don't want to. All right, the contract term will be January 1 to December 31 of 2024. These awards will all be funded through a reimbursement contract with the city. What that means is that you will incur those expenses and then you will submit monthly invoices to the city uh, for processing and we do pay on a net 30. All organizations must meet the minimum safety requirements which are attached to the RFP as I believe exhibit D. 
Insurance, this is not something that you will need to submit with your proposal. However, it is something that you should be thinking about um, and that I would discuss with your insurance agent um, in the meantime. For contracts with the Office of Children's Affairs, we do require commercial general liability insurance with no exclusion for claims against sexual abuse and molestation. Uh, this is something that is reviewed um, with a, we do re review your policies to ensure that that is in fact the case. Automobile liability, if you transport youth or own a fleet, a fleet of vehicles, automobile liability coverage is required. Workers' compensation, this is a state requirement, and so we are simply the pass-through here. Uh, if you or your organization has applied to waive uh, workers' compensation and you filed your paperwork with the state to waive that, um, that will carry through on this contract as well, your waiver, um, I mean. Cyber liability coverage is also required. Uh, this protects uh, personal identifiable information, um, information that could uh, be accidentally shared via email. Uh, and so the cyber liability coverage is, non, is a non-negotiable for the city. Eligible proposals. Uh, we are looking forward to hearing from a little bit of everyone. Uh, we're looking at nonprofit organizations with an active 501c3. Also, organizations that have applied for their 501c3 are also eligible. Developing organizations such as small LLCs or sole proprietors, faith-based organizations are eligible as long as you're not requesting funding for faith-based programming. Uh, we can get into to discussing more about that if you have additional questions. Uh, schools for-profit entities, and quasi-governmental entities, including uh, institutions of higher education, are eligible to apply. Organizations must be in good standing with the Colorado Secretary of State Office. Uh, they, we're requiring that they have a demonstrated prior experience in providing su successful programs. Organizations that serve youth ages prenatal to 24, and organizations delivering programs within the city and county of Denver. What that means is that your, your home base could be located outside of the city and county of Denver, but your programming that you're delivering is happening within Denver. All right, the process will be uh, for this per request for proposal will be to attend the DA, one of the DEA Connect training. Uh, yeah. either tomorrow or on yeah, September 7th. Yeah. And uh, again, if you have already attended these trainings, you, you don't need to train. Uh, you, they're not mandatory for you to attend again. Can everyone we ask sure everyone to make please. Sure they're muted. Excuse me, can we make sure that everyone has their uh, has okay. their, like, no, their mute on, please? And it just crunched in a way. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, we would love to hear any and all questions for, that you may have. And we well, plan to share those with uh, everyone through BidNet. Please submit any questions online in BidNet no later than 5 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, August 30th. Please be sure to gather and complete all of your supporting documents as requested in the proposed in the RFP. Uh, refer to the checklist on the last page uh, to make sure that you have a complete package. Uh, we request that you submit the proposal online prior to the deadline. We have listed the deadline as 3 p.m. so that I can be available to support you should you have any challenges with BidNet. Uh, if it were at five o'clock, I may not be available to support you. 
a bid net will automatically close the responses after the proposal deadline, so no late responses will be able to be accepted. We understand that if your internet goes out, you know, there are some things that happen. We'll need you to reach out to us immediately um, to make sure that we can get that uh, fixed for you. Please note that BidNet does keep uh, a log of activity. So we are able to track um, the activity by each organization within the system. All right. Proposals will be evaluated on organizational capacity, organization description, program description, program location or locations, your budget and budget narrative, and listed goals and outcomes. Proposal requirements. Uh, the narrative will be the scope of work template that was provided as exhibit A. All of your responses will be in that document. There are no uh, separate questions that are listed in the RFP document. The budget document is also provided in Exhibit A in the scope of work. We are requesting a copy of, a of your Certificate of Good Standing from the Colorado Secretary of State's office. The Certificate of Insurance, all of the requirements are listed in Exhibit B. Again, you will not be submitting that with this proposal, but we wanted you to have all of that information up front to so that you can make an informed decision about applying for these funds. If your organization has a fiscal sponsor or a fiscal administrator, you will be asked to submit a copy of that partnership agreement um, if applicable. Again, here are the important dates for you to know around this proposal. Uh, we will be posting all of the questions and answers that we've received from both the uh, in-person information session and online, as well as any questions from this uh, information session. On Friday, September 1st, we will be uploading those into BidNet. Again, proposals are due on Friday, September 8th by 3 p.m. Mountain Time, so that's, that's 3 p.m. Denver Time. And we are anticipating announcing funding awards on Friday, November 1st. All right, we're going to jump into the scope of work, which is the narrative piece, the narrative portion of this RFP. It will cover all of these uh, categories. All right, so this is what it will look like, just so that you have a really good idea of, of what you're looking at once you begin to uh, draft the, the narrative uh, in response to this RFP. Uh, I'm looking over here because my other screen is over here and this is probably the screen that you're looking at. Uh, so you will be asked to list your organization name as registered with the Secretary of State. Everything that you list for your organization will be based on how your organization is registered with the Secretary of State and the partnership should you have one with a fiscal sponsor. The fiscal sponsor name also needs to be listed as it's registered with the Secretary of State. Required contacts. We do need all of these contacts for your organization. We recognize that we partner with some larger organizations where this may be multiple people as well as smaller organizations uh, where this could be the same person. And that's okay too. No? All right. Let's see here. We covered all of that fun stuff. All right, getting into the meat and potatoes. We will be asking for summary information, equity, diversity, and inclusion information, and collective impact. I know that there are a lot of words and that this, this font is really small, but again, you'll get a copy of this uh, as soon as we're finished. We'll upload this into BidNet for you. Uh, this, this slide is slide 23. 
And it really is just describing how we would like for you to complete each of these sections. How long has your organization been delivering this program is a table. And so you'll just pick, you'll pick one. Is it zero to two years, three to five years, six to 10 years, et cetera. So each of these describes how we would like for you to respond. For some, like number four, describe your organization's strategies for the following. This is both a narrative and a table for this section. Uh, we will be covering recruitment, enrollment, and retention for how you are recruiting the youth and rolling them in your program, and then how are you retaining them as well. So remember that slide 23 is really to give you uh, some guidance on, on how to complete these sections. For the budget and budget narrative, uh, the eligible expenses or activities that can be funded are personnel. This is staffing support. These are individuals that are on staff and receive a paycheck through your, through your organization. Fringe benefits are applicable to those personnel that you have listed uh, in, in section A. Travel, field trip expenses, or reasonable transportation costs. Should you be requesting funds for mileage, mileage reimbursement, those are charged at the IRS rate for this year. Uh, supplies and materials, uh, supplies and materials for your program. Uh, so you may, you may have backpacks, you may have paper clips, those would fall under supplies and materials. Subcontracts. Subcontracts are used when you bring in a subject matter expert or a partner organization, um, any services that your organization does not directly uh, provide or deliver. Please note that all of the terms and conditions of your contract also apply to any subcontractor that you list um, and that you partner with or contract with uh, on this program. Other direct costs. These are other costs that are not included in any of these other five areas. Um, please note that no more than 5% of the amount requested is allowed for purchasing food and beverages. So should you be uh, should you be delivering a cooking program, a cooking program, food or spices or beverages uh, for that program would fall under supplies and materials. This is for purchasing food or beverages uh, for snacks or meals for program participants. Uh, please note that your organization may include the cost for your insurance premium that is required by the city. So uh, any of those four areas that we discussed for the uh, for the the insurance can be included in the cost, and you should include in your budget. Indirect costs: no more than ten percent of your total amount requested is allowed for indirect or administrative costs. That would be rent, mortgage, rental of space. Uh, utilities, things of that nature. Please note that your funds can only be used for the purposes that are outlined in the service agreement. I see that we have a number of questions that are coming. Kat is monitoring the questions. Kat, would you like to pause and take some of the questions now, or should we take all questions at the end? You let me know what your preference is, Tara, because I know I'm going to need some of your help answering these questions. So uh, tell me what you prefer. Um, sure. Let's go ahead and we'll pause here uh, and and then we can we can um, answer a few of the questions. Uh, this is just a visual for you to see how uh, that budget and budget narrative will look in your scope. Uh, Keep in mind, this is a Word document, so it should be easily um, accessible and easy to, to fill in. Uh, real quick, 
please use calculations for each expense, even if they're estimated. Uh, so if you have personnel, your personnel should be listed by title and then include the salary or hourly rate and the percentage of time that you're billing to, to this grant. All right, let's pause here. Kat, uh, let's see. Will OCA consider new programs for funding or is OCA hoping to support existing ongoing programs? Both. That is an excellent question. Thank you so much. Uh, through this RFP, o, uh, OCA is looking to fund both new programs and existing programs. Please note that we will not be funding any startup organizations. We will be funding new programs, though. Thank you. Um, how does OCA define developing organizations such as small LLCs or sole proprietors? What's considered a small LLC under city definitions? Um, and can any for-profit entity apply or are there requirements or limitations? One of the really nice things about this funding is that this funding was left really wide open for youth programs. So uh, in the spirit of the intent of the funding, it is broad and we are looking for uh, we're looking for proposals that that are serving youth and uh, first, a, a developing or small LLC, uh, typically those are LLCs with uh, less than a $1 million annual operating budget, uh, and developing is uh, typically those that have been in business for um, up to two, two to five years. I think the other thing to mention is that the program needs to be offered at no or very low cost. Yeah. So that's something Thank for um, our you. LLCs to consider. Um, there are a couple of questions about um, eligibility of current OCA grant recipients to apply for this fund. If you are receiving funding under another grant from OCA, you are eligible to apply for this funding. Um, you would just need to differentiate between the, the programs. Keep in uh, mind too, along with that, that you can use these funds to supplement your existing programs. Uh, you cannot use these funds to supplant other program funds. And, there and I'm happy was... to dig into that a little bit if you have any questions about what that means. There was a question about that, Tara, so maybe we'll jump to that. Can you clarify and provide examples of eligible and non-eligible activities under the non-supplanting requirement? Can these funds support existing programs if there are budget gaps? Yes. You can support a program with a budget gap. If you have, let's say for example, you have a program and the total budget to fully deliver said program is $100,000 and you absolutely have $90,000 committed to the program, but another, an extra $10,000 would uh, would fill that gap. I should use a 7525 here since you're not applying for $10,000 on this one. Uh, you can absolutely apply for that 25 to fill in that gap. What you cannot apply for is $100,000 that would supplant the other 75 that you already have budgeted for that. Supplant just means to take the place of. Thank you, Tara. Are funded programs required to be located in or serve individuals who live in opportunity neighborhoods, or is that a preference? That is a preference, and we will get into that a little bit later in the in the presentation. Um, I think the rest of these we're probably going to get some clarification as we go. 
Um, and there may be a couple that we don't get to within the presentation, but we will respond uh, in BitNet. So let's go ahead and move on just for the sake of everyone's time. All right. Thank you so much, Kat. I appreciate that. All right. Goals and outcomes. For this RFP, the outcomes will be one of these that are listed, or if you have one that is not listed, you would list that under other here. Uh, these are protective factors as uh, drafted by the CDC. And so we are looking for programs uh, to, to choose one or more of these protective factors as the outcomes for their program. Um, and again, other is an option. The goals for this RFP will will be listed and directly inform or impact the outcome that you choose. So here I, whoops, sorry about that. Here I've chosen connect young people to caring adults and activities for this example. My outcome here is connecting the young people. And what is the goal? The goal is that 80% of participants report feeling connected. How will we measure that? We'll measure that via self-assessment, observation by staff. And when will we do that? We will do that monthly throughout the duration of the, the program. Uh, so what we'd like to see, this is considered a SMART goal format. We'd like to see that your goal directly feed, feeds into your outcome, how you will measure it, and the timeliness of measuring. Uh, what will not What we are looking for is that the timeline for measurement be throughout the duration of the program and not an annual assessment. All right, for compliance and reporting, there are a lot of words on that <laughs> on those two pages at the bottom of the the scope of work template. And so you can find those on page seven. Uh, and there were too many really to, to dive into here. Um, they're for your information and in full transparency of what uh, those reporting and compliance requirements will be should you be funded. Again, exhibit B is the certificate of insurance. This just lists out, this is for your information. Uh, if you are funded by this uh, RFP, this will, um, cover your, your requirements. Excuse me, one second. Got a little tickle there. Again, you are not required to submit a certificate of insurance uh, with this proposal. So that you have a nice example of what it looks like, this is what your insurance certificate should look like. And again, this will be a post-award requirement. Uh, all organizations will be required to meet the minimum safety requirements. Uh, please note that in order for you to secure the insurance with no exclusion for sexual assault or molestation, your organization will be required to conduct background checks and OCA supports internal hiring practices uh, and policies at the organizational level. Um, and the only, uh, the only items currently that will not be funded are staff who have been, um, we're looking for violent crimes and crimes against children. Um, all right, attendance data expectations. Uh, these programs, this funding will require you to, uh, to track attendance for each individual youth that you serve. Uh, please note that this is exhibit D uh, and you can find all of the information uh, in, that, in that exhibit. 
Exhibit E is just an example of a SMART goal format so that uh, should this be your first time drafting a SMART goal, uh, we thought we could provide um, some guidance uh, as that sometimes can be a challenge. All right. Exhibit F, this is the Child Wellbeing Index, and these are the Child Wellbeing Index Opportunity Neighborhoods. Uh, I appreciate the question earlier. Uh, these are preferred, but they are not required. All right, Exhibit G in the Exhibit G to the RFP is a sample contract. Uh, I encourage everyone to read that document as it will look like what your contract will look like should you be awarded uh, through this RFP. And if you have any requests for revisions or if any items that uh, you may want to discuss with our with our agency, uh, it would be a it reduces the time for contract negotiation if you review that up front. All right, the certificate of good standing. This is just uh, instructions on how to pull the certificate of good standing from the uh, website, from the Secretary of State website. Uh, so don't forget, you'll need to include that um, as a document with your proposal. The IRS Form W-9. For partners who have not done business with the city within the last 18 months, or who have had any changes to organization information, you will need to submit an IRS Form W-9. This, uh, this is a form that's required in order for us to set you up uh, as a partner in our city system. Please don't forget to sign that document. Uh, it is an IRS document. It is an IRS form. I don't get to take any credit for the fact that that form is wonky. Um, but sometimes it can get a little challenging uh, to get that form to save correctly. So I would ask that you be sure that, that your signature has saved in that form. And here is where you can find that form. Uh, that link should be live. All right. Again, for this is new for 2024. Uh, should you have a fiscal sponsor or ad administrator, uh, for this contract, for this program, uh, you will need to submit a copy of your partnership agreement with your proposal. Ah, post-award, the youth program locator. Uh, you will be, your organization will be required to maintain an up-to-date profile um, of your programs listed in the DAA Connect. This is one of the uh, topics that is covered in those DAA trainings. All right, we have come to the Q&A portion of our presentation. I know that's a lot of information. Again, we will upload this to BidNet so that you'll have access to this entire presentation, including listening to my voice again. Um, Kat, how are we looking in the chat? Let's see. Uh, are DAA trainings mandatory for new providers? They are not mandatory, but they are recommended. Uh, you're welcome to peruse the links that are provided. And uh, if you do not require any additional support in setting up a profile, uh, I think that that's fine. Uh, we have historically seen uh, that organizations could use some additional support in that space. And I believe we are checking with our DAA team who conducts those trainings to mm -hmm. see if they can be recorded and posted somehow. Right. Um, and we will uh, keep you all posted. If the program is for youth between ages 18 to 24, do the same safety requirements apply, Tara? That is an excellent question. 
Um, as the as the city, we again, uh, we are following the guidance of our risk management department and the information that they've provided to us is that if you in order for you to secure the insurance that you'll need then you will need to you will need to provide um those basic minimum safety requirements yeah um I'm just looking through. I think we answered a couple of these already. Um, there's a question about clarifying the word counts and the sections they pertain to. Tara, I think the word counts are listed in the document. Um, so I'll just encourage everyone to, to look back through the document again. Um, you'll see the word counts mm -hmm. there. Can an organization be named on multiple grants? So for an example, if an organization is applying as a primary applicant, can they be listed um, as a partner for another application? That's a fantastic question. Thank you for that. Yes, you can. And we do encourage, uh, Again, the third question in the narrative is about collective impact. And so we are looking at community partnerships uh, and how we are leveraging those partnerships as resources for our community. Will the grant cover stipends to students? I think I know what you're going to say, Tara, but go <laughs> ahead. Take it away. Uh, no. <clears throat> stipends are not an eligible expense, uh, but incentive program incentives are, and those would be listed under other direct costs in your budget. Thank you. Um, there is a question about, about supplementing funding. Does that mean if a current award support, supports 5% of food or 10% of a specific staff position that this request could cover an additional 5% of food or 10% of a specific staff position? Yes. Or, okay. Yep. Great. Um, someone is asking about the average award amount. So OCA typically, has an average contract amount of 30,000. Um, that is based on previous um, award amounts being between 10,000 and 80,000 is where we capped it. Um, because we are raising the floor to 25,000 and not putting a cap on the awards, we, we don't have an estimate of what the average will be um, this time around. This is a little bit of an experiment for us. Um, so we encourage you to apply for what you need uh, for your program. Tara, anything you would add to that? Nope, that's perfect. Thanks, Kat. Awesome. I just get so excited when I actually know the answer to a question. <laughs> um, I love it. I love it. So someone asked, what is considered a startup organization and does this apply to nonprofits with active programs? Uh, I'm going to answer that second question first. Uh, no, that would not apply to nonprofits that have current programming, that are delivering current programming. A startup organization would be one where um, you filed your, you registered your organization with the Secretary of State tomorrow. And this is the first time you'll ever be delivering programs at all, ever. Um, um, yeah. We are, we are 
unfortunately, we're we're not in the business of of uh, providing startup funding. Uh, there are other city agencies that do that. Uh, Denver Economic Development and Opportunity is one of them, um, but OCA is not um, in the business of of funding uh, startup organizations. Uh, someone asked if there are matching requirements for this funding. Ah, excellent question. Someone has been awarded federal funds before that required a match. Uh, no, there are no uh, there are no match requirements for this funding. Thank you for that. Um, we have a follow up on the word count clarification. There are word counts next to some headers and then word counts next to questions under the headers. We yes. may need to just take a look at that. Oh, go we ahead, We can Tara. absolutely do that. Um, we would love to give you the opportunity. Some of, those, uh, some of those sections have a table in there also. And so if there is additional information that you'd like to provide, we are happy for you to uh, briefly describe uh, with a narrative to to uh, to go along with that table, but we can absolutely look at that addition and and uh, answer that more uh, holistically in the Q and A in Bidnet. Thank you. Uh, we mentioned career or post high school assistance is helping an after school participant by giving a small scholarship toward college allowable as part of this grant uh no oca uh, scholarships are are not eligible yep. um okay. if let's back up real quick if your organization supports youth in post-secondary exploration uh, in terms of mentorship or, or assistance with securing scholarships uh, or other resources to financially support them um, going to college, we would support an organization that is facilitating that process, but not the actual direct financial um, scholarship to an, to an individual, no. Thank you, Sarah. Um, there's another question about award amounts. I don't know if I can answer this specific question right now, but um, I think what they're trying to understand is if they ask for a large award amount and it's not funded in full, um, would we offer a partial award? I will say we, OCA, will not be making funding decisions. We have um, an independent body, the Children's Cabinet, who will be reviewing these applications and making recommendations for funding. So we will not be uh, reviewing and scoring applications beyond a technical review. Um, and uh, so I'm not sure what that uh, independent body will decide as far as giving partial awards. Um, I think that we would prefer to fund programs um, or, or requests, I should say, in their entirety. Um, but I, it's really up to the, the review panel made up of children's cabinet members. Uh, Rhett, can you help us to respond to that question more holistically uh, by the September 1 deadline to upload into BidNet? Absolutely, happy to. Thank you. We'll get you, we'll get you a, a more concrete answer uh, as, if we can uh, by then. Thank you. I, I, I don't know if we will have a more concrete answer from the cabinet, but we can try. Yes, I I, I reiterate, we can try. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was also a question about the ceiling. There is no maximum award amount for this RFP. So sky's the limit. If you, 
if you apply for 1.2 <laughs> million, please remember that um, we also encourage organizations to apply for funding uh, based on the cash flow of the organization. Also, since our contracts are reimbursement contracts, uh, you will be required to uh, expend the funds and then submit an invoice for reimbursement. So we encourage um, we encourage you to think about that as well. Yeah, the ceiling is probably whatever you can expend uh, before being reimbursed. So. Mm -hmm. Great clarification, Tara. All right, we're at six o'clock. Tara, is there anything else you want to add for the good of the group? Um, I would like to offer that uh, we really uh, are constantly looking to improve. And so we would love to uh, know if you got uh, what you were we're hoping to get out of this presentation. Um, if you could give us a thumbs up. Uh, we also are consistently looking for feedback. So we would love to hear um, if there was any information that uh, you felt you did not receive that uh, we could have, should have, would have included. Um, we would love to hear that as well. Absolutely. Um... Tara and I can stay on a little bit longer if there are lingering questions. This is not your last opportunity to ask questions. You can submit in BidNet still until when, Tara? Uh, the close is Wednesday at 5 p.m. Okay, so if you think of more questions as soon as you get off of Zoom, which always happens to me, <laughs> you still have time to submit those and we will um, compile all of the questions from this session along with any additional ones we receive and respond to them in BitNet. It looks like we've got some thumbs up in the chat. So some folks got what they needed. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, thank you all again so much. We hope you have a wonderful evening. Liz, thank you uh, so much. And uh, we look forward to reading all of your wonderful proposals.